This Friday, November 30th, remember, you can get your version of this very beautiful playmat. And I must say, spectacularly, this came out. It will go on sale at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. for you California time, and 8 o'clock p.m. for those of you in the Central Time Zone. So don't forget, get your copy this Friday. Hey, I told you, or actually told any of you, that I would probably be talking about Paleo Frog after the year 2017 and after just being abysmally destroyed by this deck when grass was around. I would have hoped that you all would have laughed at me and said, Man, Rabbi, you just suck at this game. Well, Christian Pinnago Scott, what was it? Second place or something? At the Bakota Regional. And I'm still sitting here, I'm looking at this list, and I'm going, Thanks, Paleo. I'm so glad to see you back. Now, this is probably going to be a really nice, exciting factor to a lot of you getting the chance to see 60 card variants kind of coming back into the game. I know it's been a little while since we've we've seen a 60 card Paleo list. I've seen like 45 and 40 card versions running around, but I'm, I'm no paleo expert in the grand scheme of things. I know there are a lot of other people out there that are a lot more dedicated to their craft than I am, but 60 cards. 41 of these are trap cards. I can only imagine kind of what some of the bricks look like in this deck. Oh, if grass was around, like, oh, all the paleo cards are just so free, and you get, like, so much more value out of Absolute King Blackjack when you are playing grass, but you know, we don't have grass. But in this current format, like, this is not a really bad rogue call. And this was the deck I was talking about that was abusing Scattershot with Reload in the side deck. Like, I mean, as a secondary engine, like, this isn't terrible. So, alright, let's dig on into Mr. Pinnago's list here. So we have two copies of Absolute King Backjack. I don't know... If I would want to play three copies of this, I, I think that this is fine. But during your opponent's turn, quick effect, banish this card from your graveyard, excavate the top card of your uh, deck. If it's a trap card, you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and set it on your field. And that's only if it's a normal trap card. Otherwise, send it to the graveyard. And then uh, that set card can be used this turn. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can look at the top three cards of your deck and place them on the top of your deck in any order. We did it. And then, of course, triple copies of Duke Frog. This is a mandatory staple. Um, you, you can't really mess with these ratios when you're playing 60. Now, Triple Gob is a math man. Um, on normal summon, you get to bury a level 4 lower from your deck. So you can kind of set up whatever you don't want to see here. And then in addition, if he's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you get to draw a card. Um, your main reason you're playing this is because of that key float ability. Um, and I can't stress that enough, especially like when you have to get into the situation where you need to slow down the game state and try to maintain advantage. Mathematician actually gets you there. Now, two copies of Ronin Toten, even in 60, I don't think you want to be playing three copies of these. <laughs> no thank you. Now, triple copies of Swap Frog, no matter what the deck is, you still need to be playing. This is going to be the heart and soul of your deck. If you see this and literally any other combination of extenders in your deck, like, you literally should be good to go for that entire game. Like, you should have no real problem trying to do anything. Now, card of demise, you're probably looking at this deck and you're like, oh boy, 60 cards and 3 desires? Alright, guy, you need to calm down. Uh, I think this is fine. You have no real reason not to be playing this, especially when everything in your deck just sets itself. Uh, triple copies of Desires. Once again, it's a card that says draw two. You need to remember, you need to be crunching actual numbers when you're playing this deck, and you're going to be needing those turbo cards to put you into these situations. So Desires is very good. One copy of Breakthrough Skill. I'm One of this is fine. Um, the fact that you get to blink something, and then you can banish it from the graveyard to also blink something is really good. Multi-purposing cards are extremely well. Triple copies of Fiend Griefing. Target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, shuffle it into the deck, and then you can send one Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard. Hmm. Hmm. Anyone see anything here? 
It's a normal trap card that gives you access to dropping off Absolute King. And then to be fair, like, it gives you Graveyard Disruption. It's something that I kind of think Paleo needed. Of course, Triple goes a match. What kind of stall-esque deck are you? Unless you're playing the, one of the best Floodgates to make sure that your deck can maintain tempo in those situations. I see no reason not to be playing this. Oh, man. We're really playing Triple. Yep. Triple Heavy Storm Dust. This is probably something that you can rotate in between your side. Depending on the matchups, um, it really just depends on what you're playing against. Uh, one copy of Imperial Order, I mean, hello, trap cards. Like, you shut off six spells in your own deck. Do you really care? Now, on to, like, more of the Paleo S cards. Triple copy is a lost win. So getting to Blink, Swash Summon Monsters is abysmally amazing for this deck. And the ability that it can recur itself back, that's so good for this deck. Now we're playing triple copies of Candina, target one face of monster your opponent controls, you get to set it to face down defensive mode, and then you can revive this on a chain link, as per all paleo effects. Uh, but the full blinking effect, really good. Triple copies of Dynamiscus here. So, with Dynamiscus, you have to target a card on the field, and then discard a card from your hand, and then you get the ability to banish a Karma Cut contrary to popular belief, is still really, really strong. Like, I, I don't know why people shit on Dynamiscus, but I, I get it, the discard one, but still, like, it's not that bad. Then we have two copies of Mr. Lin Shield. God, I can't even pronounce it. We're just going to call it Lean. Mr. Lean here, target one banished card, return it to the graveyard. And then, of course, once per turn, you get the ability to return this back. Hmm, I like returning my frogs I banish. <laughs> Yay, combo extenders. Triple Gobbies and Morella send one trap card from your deck to the graveyard. Ooh, and then once per chain, you get to revive this guy. This is going to be literally any paleo you want in the graveyard. Probably dump this guy. Like, nobody likes Mr. Lean. Now, Triple Gobbies of Olenoides. So, target one spell and trap card on the field and destroy it. <laughs> like, nothing else to really say here. Then, of course, Triple Copy is a reckless greed. At the end of the day, you still are a deck that wants to draw cards. You are playing 60 cards. And yes, reckless greed can put you a bit behind at times, but like you're still setting up negations. You're not going to have any real problem with this card, so just kind of understand that. Now, the deck is playing two copies of Rivalry of the Warlords. Much like the goes and match theory here, Rivalry isn't as inclusive in the format for what you really want it to do um, type is sometimes an issue but for the most part still it's another floodgate that your deck has access to now one copy of Psalm Judgment triple copies of Strike and one Psalm Warning now the big bad boy here is Trap Trick you get to banish one normal trap card from your deck except for Trap Trick and set one card with the same name directly from your deck also, it can be activated this turn. You can only activate one trap card for the rest of this turn after this effect resolves. You can only activate one trap trick per turn. So anything that you want in this deck that is a normal trap card, trap trick will give you access to that. Hmm, reckless Greed Abuse. <laughs> now the extra deck down here is pretty Paleo-esque. I don't really see anything too different that sticks out to me. We have two Star Boys, which is pretty standard. One copy of Link Karibo. One copy of Mr. Link Spidey himself. And then, of course, we have one Nightmare Phoenix for those back row disruptions. One copy of Nightmare Mermaid. One Cerberus. One Boral Sword. One Borolo. Triple copies of the Toad Master himself. You have absolutely no reason not to max out on this. Like, you need to super. You need these cards. Like, this is your win con. Take advantage of it. And then of course, one copy of Obabinia, one copy of Anomalicus, and the Cat Shark is back. When this card has Xyz material attached to it, that was originally water, cannot be destroyed by battle. And then once per turn during either player's turn, you attach one material, target one rank four lower Xyz monster you control, its attack and defense become double its original attack and defense until the end of this turn. I miss this card. I know a lot of you guys did too. Side deck here we have two copies of Prankatops, controlling cards are really good. Triple copies of Inspector Border. You're a stun deck. Let's be real here. Do what other stun decks do. 
take advantage of the situations that your opponent puts themselves in. You have no reason not to be playing border. Now, this was some spicy tech here. Triple Volcanic Scattershot. So if this card is sent to the graveyard, ping your opponent for 500. If it was sent to the graveyard by the effect of a Blaze Accelerator, send two more scatter shots from your hand or deck to the graveyard to ping everything on your opponent's field. And then, of course, Blaze Accelerator. While the, It becomes Tri-Blaze while on the field. During either player's main phase, you can send one Volcanic card from your hand to the graveyard to draw a card. And then, of course, you can do other stuff, but nobody really cares. We just care that Scattershot with this guy is a free board wipe. And then, of course, triple copies of Dark Bribe, and then triple copies of Mistake for just floodgates. Like, you gotta play them. So this is the 60-card Paleo list, and I will say, this is very interesting. I mean, to, to me, this is innovation at its best. So what do you guys think? Please, leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think. And, well, congratulations on the second place, sir. Peace. The ride never, well, truly ends. Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a truffle shuffle instant all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancole 40 for some awesome banger content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.